What's up guys, welcome back to the Ozone and welcome to another audiobook for my book, uh, Fazbear Writes, uh, where it, it was a competition where people had to write a Fazbear Fright story uh, with the title The Music Box and today we're going to be reading the second one uh, and in my opinion this one is actually incredible, like all of them are amazing. But you're, you're going to love this one. I'm sure you're going to love this one. So this one is called My Grandfather's Clock, and this is a submission by Gav Paul. Uh, so congratulations for, for also winning this competition. Uh, and we're going to read your story right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's, let's get straight into it. Uh, make sure there's another competition, by the way, called Showtime. So make sure you go check out uh, my community post and my Discord and stuff for all of that. Uh, so yeah, you can you can submit your own story. Anyway, my grandfather's clock. Grandpa Bernie loved his clocks. Grandpa also had way too way too many of them. Every week when Jevon would, sorry, I, I've got to do this again. <laughs> I apologise. Uh, Grandpa Bernie loved his clocks. Grandpa also had way too many of them. Every week when Jevon would visit the large and ancient Victorian-style house, his grandfather would tour the halls with him, showing off his favourite clocks. Every afternoon Jevon was there, Grandpa Bernie would stroll with him and talk about his career as a clock shop owner. Jevon found it dull and boring and mind-numbing how he could even be related to such a weirdo. These walks through the halls weren't even the worst of it. Every day Jevon spent there, they would have an early lunch around half past eleven. Jevon would scold himself for being such intricate time-telling phrases. Um, in the middle of their meal, precisely at noon, every single clock in the house, digital or analog, would play a tune about an elderly man passing away after a clock stops in a music box way. The lyrics that Jevon knew would play through his head as the song continued for minutes. He hated that awful song. This is why Jevon's parents told him that they were going on a trip to Barbados. He was excited. Until they told him he would be spending a week at his grandfather's house instead, he did not like that at all. He lost his cool right then. How on earth could the two of you torture me like this? He exclaimed in a shrill voice. Now listen here, young man, retorted Jevon's mother. You're going to be fine. Grandpa Bernie will take good care of you while you are gone. And that was that. They left for the airport two days after and dropped Jevon off at Bernie's house. Jevon stood in the, in the driveway watching the car turn the corner at the end of the street. He couldn't believe he had to spend a week in that horrid house. Jevon decided to give Grandpa Bernie a piece of his mind. Jevon picked up his du duffel bag full of clothes and marched up the steps of the porch to where Grandpa was standing. Hey kiddo, Bernie greeted. I wor he was cut short by Jevon's rage. Listen here, old man. First, don't call me kiddo. Second, I want you to understand that I don't want to be here on a normal day, let alone an entire week. Bernie was quite taken back, but Jevon wasn't finished with his rant. I want you and your clocks to stay out of my way. With the last word, Jevon stormed inside, slamming the door in Bernie's face. Ugh, kids these days, Bernie said to himself. So dramatic. Bernie went inside. Jevon didn't mind the guest room. He knew it was newer than the rest of the house because it was a converted attic, the third floor. He sat next to a window near the floor and watched outside as a blackbird pecked its way through the trees. Though he hated the fact that he would be there for a week, Jevon knew there were still some things he could enjoy, like this view and Grandpa Bernie's cooking. Ever since Grandma Betty died, Grandpa had to take up a lot of new hobbies to fill up his time. At 90 years young, Bernie could still really get around. He took up dancing lessons, culinary classes, and even went to a few book clubs. All of his weekly activities filled up his schedule, but he still made time for his clocks and for Jevon to visit. Soon after the blackbird flew away, Jevon heard Bernie's footsteps on the stairs. Jevon got up to speak. Listen, I want to apologise, Jevon started, but it's soon interrupted by Grandpa. No, no, you don't need to apologise. I get it. You're still a kid and no one listens to you, as long as you speak appropriately, Bernie stated. Thanks, Grandpa, Jevon said, walking in for a hug. You're all right, kiddo, Bernie said as he returned Jevon's embrace. The rest of the day wasn't so bad. Grandpa even tried not to mention his clocks. 
They had a great lunch together, eating a little later than usual because they went to the store for groceries, conveniently at noon. Jevon would have loved to be in Barbados with his mum and dad. Jevon was now glad to be at his grandpa's house, that is, until later that night. Bernie and Jevon decided to watch a movie after their dinner, which consisted of homemade teriyaki chicken, wontons, I don't know what a wonton is, it's probably a thing uh, somewhere else in the world, I don't know, uh, and fried rice. They watched a great comedy about two salesmen who travel the States on a mission to save the company they work for. It was great. Jevon and Grandpa Bernie shared many laughs. The movie finished a little bit after 10, so they decided to hit the hay. Jevon's guest room was now very comfortable and he was very content. He liked hearing the small chirp of the summer insects outside mixed with the hypnotising sway of the fan above him. The bed was very nice and plush, with a large comforter that hugged his body tightly. He soon fell asleep full of love, good thoughts and peace, but it was all shattered by the loud ringing of my grandfather's clock throughout the house. Jevon was startled awake when he heard the first few notes of the tune. All the clocks made the house shake with their melody, and eventually the small alarm clock he had on the shelf by his bed joined in too. Jevon covered his ears and strained his eyes to read the clock. 12am. 12 o'clock? 12 what is Grandpa thinking? The song went on for several minutes as the lyrics went through his mind. He was afraid that after this he'd have 90 years without slumbering. Jevon was not able to fall asleep after that, though he tried with fierce determination to rest. After what seemed like an eternity, he looked up at the alarm clock again. 1.35am. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there. Uh, how on earth could it have only been an hour and a half? He questioned. He decided to try to wear himself out by getting his faz boy handheld and playing BB's Air Adventure until he fell asleep. <laughs> I love that, faz boy. <laughs> uh, Jevon awoke several hours later to the voice of his grandpa shouting, Jevon! Up and at him, kiddo. Breakfast is almost ready. Jevon slowly got up, rising like a beast out of the sheets. When did I fall asleep again? With a little bit of searching in the waves of blankets, he located his faz boy and checked the last autosave. 5.15am. He didn't realise he had stayed up so late. Jevon checked the alarm clock. 9.17. Well, I guess it's fine during vacation, he reasoned. Within minutes, Jevon was bounding down the sets of the stairs, his hunger motivating him. It's alive, mocked Grandpa Burning. How did you sleep? He asked. Fine, Jevon said on autopilot. Then he thought for a moment, except he stopped short. He had given Grandpa enough trouble for the week. Never mind, he settled. What's for breakfast? He asked hungrily. I found an interesting new recipe for steak and eggs the other day that I think you'll like, he said as he fried something on the griddle. Could you get out some dishes for us? He requested. Two plates, two small bowls one large bowl and a platter plus silverware. Once he had finished the task, Jevon and Bernie sat at the table and Bernie de uh, divided the food. Grandpa set down the platter of home fried potatoes, the bowl of fresh uh, fruit salad and a plate with an interesting biscuit-like thing with a side bowl of sausage gravy. What is it? The recipe had me make a scone-like pastry filled with sc scrambled eggs, cheese, steak and salsa. I came up with a gravy side though. Enjoy. Jevon hungrily took his first bite of the pastry. It immediately filled him with savoury flavours. Grandpa truly was an amazing cook. After they were full of the delicious food, they chatted for a while about the news, Jevon's school, and the latest novels Bernie was reading. When Jevon got up to wash, Grandpa Bernie had an idea. I know you're a smart kid. I think I might have a special project for you this week around back, he said with an odd air about him. Jevon followed him to the workshop in the backyard and Bernie unlocked the double doors. I haven't shown you this before, but it's where I tinker around with my clocks. The workshop was warmly lit and had a rustic vibe to it. The outside was painted navy blue with white trim and the overall aesthetic made it look like a small barn. Windows near the top allowed little sunlight to filter through. It was very dim inside. Jevon couldn't bear it. It was amazing. He looked around the room, taking everything in. There were tool chests filled with gears and scrap pieces of metal, tables scattered with various tools and mechanical instruments. The walls were lined with completed clocks, old, new and somewhere in between. Jevon even spotted a separate room in the back, meant for welding. Whoa, Jevon exclaimed, awestruck. Whoa indeed, Grandpa replied. 
Bernie strode across the room to a chest next to the welding door. He opened it and brought out a small three-foot grandfather clock. He longingly stared at the beautiful clock, then turned to Jevon. This clock was given to me when I was brought into this world. It was from your great-great-grandfather. His precious heirloom has not run for some years now, and I have not been able to fix it. I think you could help me with it. Jevon wandered closer to the beautiful time-telling device. Grandpa, I'd be honoured to. Jevon replied with a hug. I knew you would, Grandpa replied. If you're able to get it working, or at least make good progress on it, I'll have a treat for you at the end of the week, Bernie said with a wink. Jevon and Bernie got to work right away. Grandpa took time to explain the main components of a clock and had Jevon try disassembling and reassembling a practice one. Jevon was happy to learn and was surprised at how easy it seemed. He knew he could understand how things worked and he also knew he had exceptional spatial skills. He previously even thought of becoming an engineer or mechanic for a future career. For several hours they worked side by side in the workshop. As they talked and tinkered around, Jevon felt very glad to be with him. They stopped for a break around one and had a simple lunch of sandwiches. After eating, Bernie took the liberty of explaining the mechanics of a music box which invested the rest of Jevon's time for the afternoon. Jevon entered the house fulfilled by the progress he had already made towards his goal. So how's my apprentice feeling after his first day of work? Grandpa said playfully. Great, actually, Jevon said while stretching. Hungry, though. Very good. Better bring your appetite because I made some amazing pulled pork. Jevon said goodnight to Grandpa and went to bed. He tumbled into the sheets and fell asleep immediately, exhausted from his day. He dreamt he was in a clock factory, working at an assembly line. The conveyor belt whirred slowly as he took pieces from below him and added them to the partially assembled clock. His shift was signalled over through a loudspeaker that slowly crackled a distorted song. Jevon woke up in a cold sweat as the song started. He didn't need to look at the alarm clock because he knew uh, the answer. He flopped down as the song died out and decided to take a shower. He didn't like being sweaty. It was like he was working in his sleep. After he was clean, he decided to set the alarm for a bit earlier than he had woken yesterday, settling on waking up around 10 to help Grandpa cook. After regaining some hours of sleep, Jevon waltzed out of his room and greeted Grandpa who had just started preparing the batter for crepes. Jevon took great pride in his work. He carefully polished and oiled every gear needed. He made sure the golden weight at the base of the clock was spotless and in pristine condition. He even took a great deal of time repairing and restaining the beautiful mahogany casing. He knew he could do this. They had uh, that that sorry that night they had a fine dinner of potato bacon cheddar soup with a side garden salad. Bernie suggested that they play some card games. Jevon decided to try his hand at a game called Egyptian Rat Screw. It was Thursday evening now; nearly half the week was already gone. In his dream world, Jevon had a nightmare, a very rare occasion for him. He dreamt that he was suspended above purple flames that threatened to eat away at his flesh. He was held up tightly by his wrists which hung above his head. The rusted chains dug into his skin. As he was pulled higher and higher, the flames grew and grew. Above him, Jevon could see that the chains were held in the grasp of a set slender figure. This strange apparition was definitely not human. The entity was extremely thin and had striped sleeves and legs that alternate between black and white. The body was an opaque void with an exception of three white buttons just below the neckline. It had no feet but its legs ended in sharp points. It appeared to have three fingers on each hand that firmly held the chains in place. The worst part of it was the face, if you could even say it was a face. It was more of a mask that reminded Jevon of clowns or mimes. The white mask had large holes for eyes that grinned in an almond shape. The gaping mouth sat between two rosy cheeks and painted tears flowed down from the empty sockets. Jevon screamed as the strange being began to emit a sound. Jevon could tell what time it was when he suddenly woke, because the song had started to play. Bernie didn't have to wake him up because Jevon was already downstairs sipping on coffee. Oh, you're up, Grandpa said, with slight surprise. What made you make that decision? Bernie pondered. Just felt like getting an early start today, Jevon blankly stated while staring into space. They got to work after their meal of delicious yogurt parfait. Today his task was to repair the music box that played the only other song that Jevon heard. Besides the jazz music, Grandpa played while uh, chefing around. I don't know what that means. 
He was sure that when he was done, he would repeat that song by memory backward, or he could. Friday evening's dream gave him another glimpse at the figure he could only describe as a marionette, or was Jevon really the puppet? He was the one chained up, after all. This time he felt paralysed as the screeching came, mocking him with a song that lasted a millennium. Tears streamed down his flushed face, reflecting the figure that hovered above him. Jevon only had three days left at the house and he was intent on finishing the clock. He knew it was up to him to finish it. If Grandpa couldn't fin fix the clock, who else could? He worked endlessly between the amazing meals and conversations with Bernie and the night terrors that awaited him in bed. He went for another two days until the clock was finished. Bernie and Jevon stood around the island in the centre of the workshop where the clock stood, not too big for a shelf. They admired the craftsmanship until Grandpa paused to check his watch. He held up a finger as the weight swayed side to side. Right on time, the clock sang along with the others as tears welled up in Bernie's eyes. He reached for Jevon's far shoulder and grasped him in a hug. Thank you so much, kiddo, he said lovingly. You don't understand how much this means to me. Yes, I do, Jevon replied. Yes, I do. Bernie pulled up in the car to the recently opened Freddy Fazbear's Pizza with Jevon in the passenger seat. Jevon happily sounded, You're taking me here for fixing that clock? Of course, I want you to have fun too. Jevon rushed out of the car to meet his friends that he saw at the door of the friendly establishment. Mark and Robert were invited by his mum and Bernie to play with Jevon for his last day. He was even more glad he had worked so hard. The afternoon was filled with games, music, food, music and more. Jevon hadn't had this much fun in a long time. He was able to play his favourite arcade games with his friends and grandpa who showed to be a mean skee-ball player. They all sat through several shows of the funny animatronics and played an endless amount of games. Mark even managed to get a high score on Circus Baby's Cupcake Challenge. Towards the end of their visit they decided to spend the tickets they had earned at the prize counter. Jevon had his sights on a certain something for a certain someone. When they arrived at the counter, they, there appeared to be nobody working at it. Hello? I'd like to spend my tickets, Jevon called out, but there was no reply. Bernie looked around for a moment and noticed a strange box that had a crank with a sign winding, uh, saying, Wind for service. Bernie wound up to the present-like box, and soon a familiar tune began to play. No freaking way, muttered Jevon. The box opened and he was astounded to see the marionette from his nightmares. He could barely speak as it waited for a command. Jevon stammered. I'd like the um, cookbook, uh, uh, please. Jevon's last word ending on a higher note. Please? <laughs> the puppet slowly rose, its body casting a shadow on the four of them on the ground. The marionette's slender hands slowly grabbed the cookbook off the shelf and rested it gently in Jevon's arms. The strange animatronic then took the wads of tickets off the glass counter and stowed them away in his box. The music box began to unwind, this time playing a different song, Pop Goes the Weasel, which made Jevon's skin crawl even more. Trying to remain calm, Jevon slowly gave the cookbook to his grandpa. I uh, wanted to win this for um, you as a thank you present, he clumsily explained. You're such a sweet kid, you know, Bernie replied and they all walked out together, while Jevon took one last glance at the music box. Jevon couldn't sleep that night, that final night. He waited for it to come. He needed to stop it. 10.30. 11. 11.30. Jevon braced himself for the song to play. Grandpa Bernie heard a loud, loud shatter, almost like glass smashing, and woke up. Slowly, he turned off his respirator and took off his sleep mask and walked downstairs. He didn't see anything out of the ordinary until he looked outside. The light was on in the workshop. Bernie rushed out of the house and opened one of the doors to the shed. Is someone in here? His words were cut short because his vocal cords were severed, his esophagus and throat in half, and he was drowning in his own blood. Jevon dropped the knife. He could now rest knowing the song would never play again. Beautiful. It's such a beautiful story. Ah! <laughs> um, can I just say, that's the third time I've read that. And I still have, like, the shivers. I have, uh, what are they called? Goosebumps. Goosebumps. I have goosebumps. Uh, the third time reading that story. That's actually 
so incredible because it's it's literally the definition of a false sense of security if you know what i mean like we all thought that jevon was was actually turning out to be a really nice boy at the end like he was horrible at the beginning but you know you're such a sweet kid you know he he got a present for his granddad and then he killed him like oh my god it's so good it's bittersweet it's so amazing uh that's why i absolutely love this story this ending is incredible uh everything in the story just works um there's a lot of really really good descriptions like even that ending was written so well uh his words were cut short because his vocal cords were severed i think what um what you're good at doing in writing is making sure that everything you write about has purpose um so at first i didn't know how uh, like the puppet in the dreams was actually going to relate to in real life but then we find out that he's going to Freddy Fazbear's pizza um, as like a present from his grandpa and then that's where you see the puppet uh, and then he got a cookbook for his granddad because he's good at cooking um, you know everything just works in the story there's no loose ends uh, everything is explained really well and I really like it you, you definitely plan this story out well and you've written it exceptionally well too um so well done for winning uh, this is so incredible tell me guys in the comments what you thought of this story as well next time we're going to be reading the last story which is agony alley by inky ink which is also an amazing story um all of these are so good oh my god um yeah the standards of this competition was amazing it was it was so much better than i thought it was going to be anyway i will see you in the next video goodbye